welcome everyone to the CEF dashboard uh, CDS meeting for RIF release. So we will cover um, more or less what, what uh, are going to be the next uh, big milestones for the dashboard for the RIF release and also how they connect to the recent and past experience with, uh, with uh, issues and experience while uh, developing new features. So I will try to connect all these things together. So first of all, um, well, here I, I paste the link, I think, in BlueJeans, uh, even if you join after the message has been posted, it's still there, right? So you can access the, uh, can you confirm that you see the dashboard, uh, uh, the Etherpad link? I, I will, I will test it. Okay, thanks. So, uh, first of all, there uh, this links to the previous, the Quincy one and uh, the main uh, CDF, uh, the CDS uh, one. So one of the biggest things from this last uh, release, the both Pacific and Quincy process uh, has been the scale testing that has been um, undergone in, in the POSI uh, supercomputer center. Um, so basically, uh, they granted that access to this environment where we could test the uh, CEP at, at the scale. I think we were talking about 150 nodes or something. So it was quite a um, large uh, scale cluster. So um, there were some findings that specifically applied to the dashboard. Um, so they were mostly had to do with the um, some specific endpoints. Some of them were obvious, like the OSD. Uh, components of ACB that scaled, uh, that presented scale issues. And that was kind of uh, um, expected, but others like the number of alerts, for example, we would expect uh, having scale issues there. But given that some alerts are triggered on a per uh, instance basis, that basically meant that if you had an alert triggered by an OSD, you will then have the same amount of alerts triggered by uh, per times the number of OSDs. So, that will mean that you will have the same scale issues. Um, additionally, um, we found issues with the um, monitoring, how the metrics are reported and uh, delivered to Prometheus. So that's uh, one, that's been have one of the key uh, takeaways from this uh, scale testing. So that's basically summarized here, um, and we will see later more or less how this is going to be um, tackled. So, I mean, all these links, I think they basically describe and they are very interesting if you want to uh, have more details about the process of the scale testing and the different issues encountered. So, uh, those are really um, interesting uh, reads, if, reads if you are interested on, on the topic of uh, scale, uh, scale testing. So, uh, regarding the recent, um, I'm not sure if uh, Mike has officially uh, publish the results of the SEV users survey. Uh, just, do you know if uh, that has already happened? Um, uh, yeah, I don't think. I think the survey committee has started meeting last week to get things together, do like a blog post in more publishable form. Okay, 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 okay. So, well, basically, I, I went through the um, dashboard specific feedback. Um, and what well, these are the uh, comments that we got from the users that uh, participated in that survey. So we got positive feedback in the sense that we dashboard is progressively improving and covering uh, more and more of the SF uh, workflows. Um, we still see that some users are only using the dashboard for monitoring only purposes, so they are not actually using the active management capabilities. Uh, there were some comments around the UX, UI experience, basically, uh, well, to improve the UI design, um, also improve the reporting uh, for the pools. Um, and yeah, this is an interesting uh, suggestion just to provide a, an object browser. This, I mean, will have to be strictly limited to RGB. It could be just a, a general browser. Probably that could become another scalability issue, uh, but well, it might be an interesting thing to, to discuss if uh, it might make sense to uh, be able to browse all the objects in a cluster from the dashboard. 
So regarding uh, monitoring alerting, uh, there were specific requests to display some low level metrics uh, like temperature and I'm not sure actually if uh, node export is, is providing any metrics for those. Some of them seem quite low level, but basically we're sticking to what uh, node export is uh, providing uh, for node monitoring. So we are not um, doing much about that much more about that so um this other one i'm not really sure about what this uh, means but i assume that it's a uh, troubleshooting based on grafana uh, the uh, improvement of the alerts is something that we've been working i remember that we had a couple of uh, issues reporting um a couple of alerts that have been a Extremely noisy, noisy. One is the MTU one, um, and yeah, we are going to we are improving that. So that's now fixed, I think, in Quincy. So basically, it takes into account also the um, whether an interface is enabled or disabled for displaying the MTU mismatch alert. So we are now skipping the alert on on those uh, interfaces that are disabled. Um, we were discussing uh, about how to improve this the MTU um, alert. That it, it doesn't seem to be our, I mean, an easy one if we want to do it properly. So, regarding troubleshooting, um, this is one of the biggest additions in the uh, for the Quincy release. It's a centralized login. So basically, uh, a user was uh, reporting having live logs from all the different components and demos. So this will now be possible starting Quincy. We are also planning to backport that to produce releases. But uh, um, what well, it will be available uh, soon. So I will mention more about that later. But it will be uh, based on on Loki and Bromtail. Um, I grew up, which is here. Uh, he already uh, started an exploration on a similar monitoring stack based on Elasticsearch and Kibana. So technically, I mean, Sevedi uh, might be neutral about. Uh, Vendors are stacks. We simply implemented this. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to understand stuff. if <laughs> I wanted to understand what would be the best option here to go without if um, users in community are already using alternate options as well. Uh, so, I mean, what would be the suggestion? Uh, I, Ernesto, I know we discussed about some other solutions as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, Still, we are going with the Loki and Fromtail, or we are still open to options for the best. Yeah, I, I mean, so far we have provided a, a stack, which is the Loki Fromtail one. Uh, one reason is that uh, that works really well with with Grafana, and Grafana is already deployed. So, um, but well, Grafana also supported uh, Elasticsearch. So, but there was another uh, reason, and it's the Present change in uh, from Elasticsearch to the open uh, a custom open source license and well that's uh, I'm not sure what's the status of that but that happened I think last year or a year ago more or less and they switched to a custom open source license and uh, actually I think Amazon um, forked the Elasticsearch uh, repo so some major contributors have, have been uh, diverging from that due to this uh, licensing issue. But I mean, I'm not sure. I think the um, and that's question also for Adam. Cepheidm uh, now supports a custom container uh, definition, so maybe there might be a chance for users to customize their deployments. I'm not sure if that's in the in the backlog for Cepheidm. Uh, custom containers in general came in FEO a pretty long time ago. Like you've been able to do that for some time. I know like, even on Posi, I think it was like C Advisor or something was being done that way. Um, I don't think there might be a bug with it currently. I need to go check the I saw a tracker about it, but there there should be implemented. So um, if there might be a bug right now, but in general, it's been there at least in earlier versions, and it, it will be working again soon. Be hmm. Okay. Are we still so, looking at the possibility of having multiple clusters here being uh, managed? Because I think it's a if we want to manage centralized logging for multiple Ceph clusters, it would require uh, some level of uh, 
introduction of multi cluster support and dashboard as well right overall mm -hmm. like yeah, one dashboard for multiple set clusters and yeah. i think one. that's a, a kind of a different concern right which that would be the multi cluster awareness and I, I'm, I'm going to talk about that um but i'm not sure if well in this very case we want to have a centralized login per cluster so that was the initial scope for this the yeah yeah, having a multi-cluster centralized login, that well, might be a further iteration of this approach. The thing is that, and I, I will mention that later, but for the multi-cluster awareness, we're trying to find the minimal set of uh, metrics and, and indicators that make sense. So in the case of the logs, probably that would be extremely robust, and those are very actionable at a multi-cluster uh, level. So maybe only the alerts actually uh, makes sense. I mean, if we can infer any alerts from the logs that are not, uh, cannot be extracted from any or any other metric, then it might make sense. But if we can get them from, from the existing uh, Prometheus Alert Manager alerts, we, I mean, I would prefer going for that rather than having a centralized uh, multi-cluster central uh, log storage. But I mean, that's that's an interesting topic. So probably we'll have to to have uh, further discussions on the multi-cluster um, uh, monitoring. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's an interesting one. Thanks, Rob. So uh, then you. we have, yeah. So uh, we have this other request, which is pretty specific because um, yeah, some of these things. Uh, I think we are using the orchestrator interface for the let's uh, management, but I'm not sure if there's a way to deal with it outside the orchestrator. Regarding the um, simplification of the dashboard, uh, adding workflows, yeah, that's something that we definitely are trying to it is not easy because, well, the uh, CF API is very fine-grained, so we basically need to abstract many uh, minor steps, and uh, and it's it's complex to 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 do that, especially if you want to have a transaction behavior, which is the usual that uh, you, well, what the user expect when it's uh, consuming a wizard, right, or a or a workflow that the um, the whole workflow will either succeed or will roll back in case that there is a failure. And that's really complex to do in case of uh, of set because there is no transactionality in, in, in the way that many of these uh, operations are done. So it's a pseudo uh, workflow or pseudo wizard. Um, regarding missing features, the CFX management, which I assume it's the, all the CEF auth uh, uh, management from the dashboard, that's one of the things that we are definitely committed to do in the next uh, release in the quincy sorry in the uh brief release um the grassroots management we will need to evaluate that one because well it might be quite complex to, to do that and as you may see some of these things are actually um uh conflicting right it's hard to abstract and simplify things and at the same time also provide advanced uh, workflows or um fine-grained operations so we'll need to find a a common ground for both uh, approaches, but in general, we're favoring um, simpler and, and well, more abstract operations rather than fine grained ones. In any case, if we can identify the specific use cases for the uh, cash rules, we may try to abstract those and, and provide a simple workflow for, for those. Uh, don't know exactly what this one means. Um, regarding the expert mode and other advanced operations. Yeah, many of these things I think are um, available to the dashboard right now. Um, but we, we try to cover maybe the 90, 80% of uh, the functionality that basically allows you to do most of the, of the daily stuff. So um, this very case, yeah, maybe the main size is not available. But well, it's all based on uh, request. So if someone is, is interested on a specific feature, I would always encourage uh, you to do that, to open a tracker and we are paying attention to the user feedback. 
um, floating IPs for NFS. That's uh, pretty specific, and um, probably something like this might be covered by um, by SFADM, right? By the HA, I might assume, but I'm not very familiar with this topic. And namespace integration, that's available to RBD, but I think that's it. We are not exposing namespaces in, in other parts of the CF dashboard. And then we have the uh, beyond related topics like the multi cluster support. This is, uh, well, uh, Paul, I will mention that later, but Paul, Paul Kostner has been running this survey just to gather feedback from the users on the topic of uh, multi cluster. Uh, it's been mostly uh, focused on monitoring, so we are not thinking about uh, multi cluster their wide uh, management, so will be just the monitoring of the different clusters, and then a user would be expected to jump into the specific dashboard for for managing that cluster. So there will be a cross uh, cluster manage management. Only for the cases of RBD and surface mirroring, this would be the case, but it would be just it. Um, editing the, jam the specification YAML files that's well we've been discussing whether it would make sense to uh, allow users to uh, directly edit the jaml files um, we have been trying to provide a nice ui rather than letting users to uh, type uh, jamels and JSONs. but if we eventually find out that there are some pieces, some missing pieces in the dashboard and it might make more, make more sense to allow users to manually uh, if the jaml, we, we could go for that. Um, yeah. Uh, we also got this one, which is uh, basically, I understand from this, it's like um, providing the user with the uh, equivalent CLA commands, right? For what you do in the dashboard. That's an interesting one. In fact, I remember some of our colleagues from SUSE, they mentioned that in OpenATIC they had like an, API recorder or something like that. So it's kind of a macro recorder. So all you, uh, a user would do in the UI, they could record all the actions and would generate the, I think the curl commands for their API. So that might be an interesting thing to, to do. I think we've talked about that in the past, posting that. And probably it would help on the automation because the API is there, but probably it's not easy to automate. You just need to go to the, um, Swagger, the open API docs, and basically write your, your scripts based on that. And maybe this way it's easier to provide the users with a, a list of commands or call commands for, for reproducing the same actions in the from the CLI. This one is um, not sure exactly how we can do that from the, it's more of a set of uh, feature, right? Uh, Reimport. Uh, OSD is from a fail host. I'm not sure this strictly connects to the dashboard. It, it's more of a general uh, request. And this one is also quite specific. So that, that would be it from the SEV uh, user survey. Um, regarding other sessions, we have only had the uh, orchestrator and the performance ones, right? So. Uh, last year, I think the dashboard was one of the last uh, sessions. So basically, we had all the feedback from the different um, and RGW too, uh, from the different components. But this year, we don't have uh, much feedback. And regarding the themes that we are going to um, basically focus for the Reef release, uh, the top one priority is day two operations. So basically, once you have the cluster running, what are the um, regular operations that an operator and an admin would perform on the cluster. So we have started with the, uh, what we identified as uh, weekly, monthly operations, and then we will start implementing yearly or rare and infrequent operations. So the idea of this, and this connects to the later backport policy, is that we are trying to uh, backport all these improvements to uh, previous releases. So given that most of these operations have to do with uh, CFADM management, we want to ensure that the um, uh, feature gap is more or less, uh, well, 
the same is in the uh, active releases. So basically, we're trying to reduce that in both Pacific, Quisi, and, and Reef. Um, the second theme is the multi-cluster awareness. So basically, that would be um, on one hand, it would be multi-site awareness. So uh, RBD and CFFS uh, mirror uh, management, and also the multi-cluster monitoring. And third one is the scale improvement. So basically, with all the feedback that we got from the uh, different scale testings, we are um, elaborating uh, actions just to reduce those. And the first one has been the self exporter. So this is a work to replace uh, the existing manager Prometheus exporter. Um, it's still just to be discussed whether we want to fully replace that, but at least there will be a, an alternative way of, of uh, gathering cluster metrics from, from this new ZEP exporter. And the reason is that the current one, the manager exporter, doesn't scale uh, beyond the 1,000 OSDs. So, so basically, um, on one hand, with the current uh, code base in Thinking Pacific, you try uh, deploying uh, more than 1,000 OSDs, you will start facing performance issues due to uh, the way that the Python uh, C++ API works and uh, locking and other kind of behaviors that affect the manager API interface. So uh, the alternative is going to be deploy a per host uh, exporter. So this uh, a new daemon will be also deployed via CFADM. It will be a kind of a sidecar container that will listen to the, will, will interact with the daemon sockets and will retrieve the uh, perf counters uh, from these uh, services. So Prometheus will just have to basically discover all these new uh, exporters and will uh, fetch the metrics, will scrape the metrics from, from these. Um, so there is uh, ongoing work for having this, and yeah, I guess the idea will also probably be uh, to work for these two early releases as well, as this is a uh, known bottleneck. Um, also, I talk about the scalability concern here uh, and the current scalability issue, but there is another one, which is uh, at least for RGLU, for all the multi-site and, and mirroring demons, um, the plan is to provide a, a richer set of metrics. So that also will uh, make worse this uh, scalability issue that uh, we've been talking about. Uh, so the idea is to deal with that by means of, well, basically uh, providing this per host metrics rather than uh, all the metrics from a single um, uh, source. And that will allow to have some kind of horizontal scalability. And the last one is basically improving the developer experience. So this is something that we are uh, constantly doing, trying to well, improve our code quality, the automated testing that we are doing, and so on. So we have a we invest a considerable amount of time on on this effort. So I already talked about the backport policy. Um, I think this is quite a well debated topic whether Peter has should or not uh, should be backported to produce releases and the general agreement is that they shouldn't uh, only back fixes but in the case of the dashboard as we are always a couple of steps behind the rest of the subclusters because when uh, the uh, components sorry because when uh, teams deliver features uh, it usually takes us uh, a few months or more than that to uh, implement the same feature in the dashboard so yeah we are always uh, like uh, between one and two releases uh, uh, after the, the original um, um, feature. So the idea is always to, I mean, be very flexible about that as, as long as we're not breaking anything. And that's, uh, um, I mean, so far, I think we have been very good at not breaking um, uh, the dashboard by backporting features. Uh, we are trying to ensure that the active releases, uh, Pacific and Quincy, have the uh, comparable amount of support in, in regarding CFADM, feature set, and uh, what the user can do with uh, with the cluster from the UI. So also the with the addition of the REST API version, which was introduced in Pacific, we can quickly detect if there's uh, a breakage um, or there's going to be a breakage in, in the API. So as soon as 
we backport something, we will quickly uh, identify if the API or the new feature is kind of breaking the existing support in the in the previous release. And well, for the specific topic of uh, dashboard um, features, um, there have been lots of things I put here with uh, were the issues that we identified or tracked for the last three years. Uh, the Quincy one. So I think we kind of achieve um, like a third of those. There, this is the issue uh, backlog for uh, things that were initially targeted at Quincy. So yeah, it's 81 trackers that covers both uh, features, um, bug fixes, and also code cleanups. Um, so well, the Backlog is here. We'll have to update this uh, with the new features, and I guess that will happen after the, all the CDS sessions. And probably some of these things will be uh, reprioritized based on on new inputs. So basically, um, the biggest feature that we are going to focus on uh, continue with the wizard. The cluster expansion one. Um, was already delivered to Quincy and has been backported to Pacific. Uh, there is this new OSD creation wizard. And the plan for that is to automatically guess the, what's the optimal uh, OSD deployment strategy based on the existing aspects of the drives. So based on the amount of uh, OSD, uh, sorry, uh, SSDs or NVMe devices in a cluster, uh, we are trying to infer what's the recommended setting. And the idea is that this wizard will uh, recommend the, the user well based on your setup. Uh, the optimal uh, deployment is uh, NVMe or IOPS optimized deployment. If you mix uh, SSDs and SDDs, uh, also maybe you, you are going for a, a, what was the name? Throughput optimized, I think, right? Pere? And the cost capacity, which is the HDD only deployment so those this is the whole so the idea is to bring uh, more and more of these uh, wizards to the dashboard and yeah provide a high level management of it then it comes the multi-site uh, management so we have the uh, surface mirroring currently there is no support in the dashboard for the mirroring apart from deploying the uh, mirror demos from from the uh, orchestrator uh, UI, um, you can actually do anything else uh, uh, with regarding the surface mirroring. So, but the cool thing about this is that the given that the API is quite similar to the RBD mirroring, uh, it's going to be very easy to extrapolate what we have for RBD mirroring to to surface. So regarding RBD mirroring, uh, right now the only missing thing is the snapshot mirroring. So we can only support the uh, pool-based mirroring and the image-based mirroring. And the only missing piece is the snapshot. So that will be the goal for, for uh, Reef to achieve uh, uh, full um, uh, coverage of the features regarding RBD mirroring. The Ceph auth management, uh, this is a pretty basic thing that we didn't have in the dashboard so far. So it makes sense just to bring this to the dashboard. So um, especially uh, for external client configuration, it might be interesting because the uh, rest of it, I may assume that it might be automated. Uh, but yeah, if you want to um, configure an external client to connect to the cluster, it might be interesting, not only to manage this, but also provide a copy paste, uh, the copy paste credential so you can quickly uh, maybe retrieve or download the credential from the from the UI. And maybe also the sep.conf file and export that to, to an external client so you can remotely uh, run that. Um, the topic of centralized logging, as said, this is a Loki Promptail uh, solution. The new self exporter. And we also had the uh, some advanced RDW uh, Features like the server-side encryption, that's uh, already there from from RGW side, 
and the idea is to integrate this with the well supported uh, key servers and also other advanced workflows for rgw like the bucket policies notifications and so on so right now the current uh, coverage of uh, rgw features in the dashboard is well pretty basic you can manage uh, uh, packets and users but and yeah there are some operations like locking and yeah, but we we need to um, increase that because I think it's been almost frozen for the last release, right? Alfonso, can you confirm that? I think in Quincy probably we haven't increased any added any new feature to that part. So yep, we will need to pay more attention to the RGL side. Um, sorry, can you repeat? Yeah, I was wondering if uh, we have delivered uh, any new feature to RGW in um, Quincy. I don't think so, right? Probably by Pacific was the last uh, time that we delivered. Yeah, RGW. yeah. For Pacific was the the selection of the of the diamond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for Quincy. Mm, not remember any major feature i mean uh, back fixes are there but uh, major i think yeah. the major feature requested was the key management service <laughs> yeah 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 and we don't have anyone here from rgw right nope okay so uh that those are all about the new features the, regarding non-functional uh, improvements. Um, well, the biggest, uh, our biggest concern is regarding scalability. So uh, that's something that uh, already affected, and it's a long-standing non-issue. RBD, uh, the RBD page uh, didn't scale very well. And um, also, well, I haven't mentioned that. So uh, after this uh, testing, the policy testing. The QA testing, we found that the uh, also the OSDs and the host components uh, presented issues while scaling. So the idea is to provide uh, server-side pagination. That's a huge uh, change in the dashboard because uh, all the actually all the information that was uh, presented by the dashboard was paginated in the dashboard in the UI itself. So basically, it came uh, complete from the backend and all the filtering and uh, pagination happened in the in the UI, and the idea of this is move all the pagination to the backend. That has some pros and cons as well, uh, because the kind of filtering that you can do in the UI is more uh, complete, it's richer than in the backend. But yeah, on the other hand, uh, if a user wants to scale uh, beyond uh, 1,000 OSDs and 100 or 200 hosts, they they will surely need this kind of um, backend uh, pagination and, and filtering. And uh, well, regarding engineering specific uh, improvements, one thing that we are paying a lot of uh, attention and effort is uh, improving our testing. So our latest addition is uh, the Grafana unit testing. And in fact, uh, we worked on a framework for testing Grafana at unit test level uh, with the prompt tool. And also we are using, um, we're exploring uh, an end-to-end -end testing with a framework provided by Grafana Labs. So that will also help us um, quickly identify this because uh, the Grafana integration is one of our major sources of issues. And definitely we need to stabilize that. Probably that will uh, save us a lot of effort. And another an alternative movement is uh, uh, backend driven UI. So this has been a topic for a while. Um, so basically, in order to simplify or lower the bar for developing the dashboard, we probably would need to ensure that developers don't really need to do that much in the UI and they can uh, I mean, stay in the Python slash backend uh, side because, well, if you compare the uh, knowledge that developers have regarding Python versus uh, UI technologies like Angular, TypeScript, or so, that's, uh, yeah, usually. Python is, is a, like a, a common tongue for, for many developers. So uh, 
uh, if we want to have uh, game external contributors, definitely we should try to move all the complexities from the UI to, uh, uh, to Python side and try to simplify that. So basically allow users to, allow the developers, sorry, to uh, bring new features to the dashboard just from Python only code. So that's kind of a goal, uh, but we'll, we will explore it. Um, on this regard, uh, Ashes, for example, started exploring uh, JSON-based uh, forms. So we tried replacing our existing forms with uh, JSON-generated forms. Um, that's that might be an interesting uh, move if we want to get rid of uh, UI uh, forms and replace that with uh, JSON-generated forms. That would be great. Also, we are generating um, other assets from uh, JSON or JSONnet like the uh, Grafana dashboards. All that part was moved to a new directory. Uh, it's called self-mixings. And we are basically uh, generating the uh, dashboard, the Grafana dashboard directly from this JSONnet uh, language. So that's also reducing a, a lot of the boilerplate that we had in, in the Grafana JSON files. So I think that would be it. Um, Does anyone have any questions, comments, ideas? Uh, um, re regarding the API, is there any major request? Stable, I mean, the, the stable mm -hmm. official API, any? Uh -huh. uh, I don't think so, at least not from the uh, user survey. And I don't think we have any. Uh, we need to uh, improve the uh, cross uh, version support that we had there. But right now, I think we only have minor version upgrades in the API, so that was easier to deal with. But yeah, we, we need to, there's a couple of minor fixes in that area that we need to implement. More ideas, suggestions? Um, No, I was thinking that if uh, using the versioning, maybe eventually the, the the UI could be decoupled, decoupled for from the backend, the the the, the front end. I mean, so mm -hmm. just as consuming a certain versions of the API, so it could be then detached from the, the monolith. I mean, the, the core. Of the yeah, yeah. Would yeah, be yeah. more manageable in terms of backporting or less backporting in the front end. I don't know. It's an idea just consuming the API version. Yeah. So you can upgrade minor, major. Yes, as long as we have that versioning uh, in place, uh, technically that would allow us to have a uh, single dashboard for multiple uh, step uh, versions. So that was one of the reasons for introducing the, the mm -hmm. API version in the, in the REST API. So to be able to detect this. And, Fail gracefully or well, implement some kind of uh, measures to, to deal with that. So, yeah. Thanks, Alfonso. Any other comments? Um, I would like to hear from the uh, component leads that we have here. So, Adam, I will start with you. Uh, is there anything here that, I mean, anything that you missed uh, from the connection uh, dashboard? Cepidium connection, or I remember we've been talking about the Rook orchestrator and how that could be presented in, in the dashboard. Yeah, I think as far as Cepidium goes, we've had decent time um, transferring features over Cepidium to the dashboard. Um, the bigger question would be what we're going to end up doing with Rook, because uh, I know if they're not going to use Manager Rook, then that limits what the dashboard is capable of in the Rook environments. But it seemed like they were just looking for monitoring stuff from the dashboard anyway, um, their deployments. So that would be the bigger question. I don't know if anyone from the Rook team is here, though, to talk about that stuff. But um, that would be a bigger question than what's going on with Cepidia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I will have a, I mean, they both are, I'm meeting with, with them again for, for to clarify this. But yeah, definitely. I mean, part of the, uh, interesting things of, of uh, Kubernetes, right, is that you have a kind of a 
not an immutable, but at least a reproducible environment, right? Uh, but if you start modifying things from the dashboard, you're kind of uh, overriding what Rook is managing from the cluster space. But in any case, via the toolbox container, you usually, you can actually modify the cluster, right? So you can perform actions that are outside the control of uh, Rook and Kubernetes. So, yeah. Yeah, we, we need to clarify with them more as what uh, would be the use cases for, for this. I mean, based on our last conversation, I don't think the, or, uh, the orchestrator API was really needed for that because most of these operations happened at a step level. So we're think related to uh, PG management and things that directly affect uh, Ceph. So, uh, all the orchestrator related stuff was directly managed by, by Rook. Yeah, that was their issue. Is that their their orchestrator API didn't really fit well with what they actually wanted to do with with Rook. Um, they ended up implementing stuff on their own, and they didn't want to make use of a lot of the orchestrator commands that were there. Um, so yeah. they decided it would be easier just to not have an orchestrator module for their stuff. Uh, and then obviously the downside of that is that it makes it harder for anyone else to integrate with what they're doing. Uh, there's no common API there. You can't like copy the CFDM implementation stuff to Rook, but um, it seems a better fit their use case to, to not use the manager Rook anymore. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, agree. Thanks, Adam. Uh, nice to hear. Josh, anything you said? I mean, uh, from uh, core rather from the uh, that core. That um, wait, 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 what you were talking about with respect to OSD deployments and and trying to recommend their optimized like way to your things that sounds very interesting to me. Um, yeah, anything that you would miss here, or I mean, I'm not sure how, when was the last time that you played with the dashboard, but if you have recently seen that, uh, anything that you missed uh, there, anything that. Uh... Um. Not in particular. I think um, I, I, I got what you gathered from the user survey. I think is quite valuable in terms of more more uh, uh, specific feedback there. And um, the last time I played with it, it was actually in the GitHub cluster where we encountered the scalability issues that you're already addressing. So I think that's that's all that's all in hand too. Um, yeah, and I guess I just wanted to mention with respect to the backporting ideas. I agree that uh, for dashboard it makes a lot of sense to for those newer features, especially since it's much lower risk. Um, being at the UI layer, the UI is not going to break the underlying storage. So that's, mm -hmm. that's not a concern in terms of the uh, risk that uh, uh, the availability and uh, durability. So I think that's, that makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah, I think the worst thing that can happen to you, sir, I mean, if there is a breakage in the dashboard is that they will have to go to the CLI for doing the same thing, but yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, regarding uh, core, I think we were talking last year about the m right? The profiles for the US, that's not yet implemented. And I haven't mentioned mm -hmm. that here, but it's in the in the backlog. I'm not sure how prioritized is that. Um, are you seeing that users rely a lot on that or they basically go with the default uh, profile or? I think we'll find out more with with Quincy uh, since mplock is going to be the default scheduler with Quincy. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of folks, there's been a few folks trying it so far with Pacific, but I think that since it's going to be the default in Quincy, we'll see a lot more how folks are uh, wanting to tune it for their use case. Great, okay, okay, okay. And they don't customize that, right? Yeah, the idea is that uh, there's like three profiles that, that um, Users can choose from, and for advanced users, you can customize them more with a custom profile. But uh, by default, we stick with uh, similar settings to what we have today, where you're kind of optimizing for client I/O at the expense of background operations. I was looking for that here. So I remember we basic US. Ah, yeah, here it is, okay. Mm. 
And the default profile is, uh, sorry, the balance one? Um, and the default is the high client ops. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so it looks and like all the details we, are there. Um, don't we have any um, telemetry feedback regarding whether users are favoring one of these or? Um, not yet, I think we will in the future. Okay. And we'll be able to see more yeah. in terms of performance stats from the new uh, performance telemetry channel as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe for Brave and Quincy, it makes sense to uh, add this, uh, expose yeah. this to the UI. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. There might be more, some more things for Rados uh, coming up, but um, we'll see what we'll after with the with the brief session for SCDS. I think it's um, Thursday. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess there's one other yeah. major thing in Quincy that comes to mind, sorry. It's um, the, um, uh, there's a way, new way to configure the auto, PG autoscaler to uh, treat certain pools as um, for bulk data and have them use a, uh, get, get high parallelism um, right, right out of the gate um, instead of having to wait for you uh, to start storing data in the pools to actually get the full complement of PGs. Um, that might be, might be something that we want to expose in like the pool creation workflow potentially. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, do you have a link to the docs uh, about that so I can create the trigger? Yeah, okay. I can find one and put it in the chat. And kind of okay. junior series can also tell you a little bit about it. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so basically, um, I think Josh said like most of it. Um, the bulk flag is basically used for, for data pool, but pools that we um, we know that there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be there's a lot of data, and then so we give them like the most PGs, and um, based on um, the usage of all the pools across um, across the cluster, um, we see that um, we're allocated based on the usage. Basically, that's the high level of things. But yeah. We'll, we'll provide you with um, the documentation uh, in the chat. Um, okay. um, other, other than that, there's also one, if I can say, one feature that that is um, we, you turn off the autoscaler like gro globally um, between all the pools. Um, basically, like before, we had to like you know go manually like um, turn turn off the pools um, autoscaler in the pools um, by, like one by one, but now we can do it globally. So um, I don't know if that's like a feature that we can expose. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. just a thought. Yeah, I'll provide a link to that as well. I'll provide two. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, right now in the pools, uh, you, I think you can enable and disable the autoscaler. I think there is. Uh, there were like three modes, so maybe one was auto, on and off, or something like that. Okay. So, okay. But it's the specific settings of it, it, I don't think we are displaying those. So yeah, we will need to, uh, um, yeah. And it, are these too many uh, settings or are, is there any chance to have a kind of profile here or uh, just to make it more user-friendly? I mean, I was thinking. Uh, what, what do you mean by um, like profile, sorry? Yeah, I was uh, so if uh, I'm not sure how many new settings this uh, requires the uh, these tunables. Uh, so I'm not sure if there is a chance to uh, tag the each uh, um, pool based on high usage, low usage, or something like that. So instead of having to manually enter numbers or something like that. Oh, oh, um, well, like if so, if. The pool is labeled as bulk flag. Like um, that pool mm -hmm. will receive like um, basically the maximum um, num like number of PGs as, as like possible, and and the okay. rest that doesn't have a bulk flag will, will receive like um, like uh, the like it will prioritize the, the the bulk pool basically, and the others will will get like what what is left basically. And yeah. okay, 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 that makes sense. Thanks, Junior. Thanks, Josh. No worries. So, 
anything else from Grados? Any other new feature? Yeah, hi, Rasta. Like I have some feedback. Yeah, means uh, right now in the dashboard, we can do a lot, lot of the install operations, like everything, all the demos. But one thing I'm missing here in, in dashboard means uh, we, we can't do operate on the dashboard. We have to use the CLI itself. So like whenever the users or the customers, they are in the 5.1, in the 5.1 G1 release or 5.2. So in the dashboard, at least should show some kind of notification. Like in Google Chrome, we have some update kind of things whenever the browser was a, uh, uh, not the updated version. So I think that kind of improvement we can make it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have, uh, but I think we already talked about that. So is there any tracker for, for it? No, no, Aristo, I not tried any tracker. Maybe I'll file one tracker. Okay, 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 okay. So, sorry, your suggestion exactly it's about the version. Sorry, I, I sorry, I, I couldn't uh, get exactly. Yeah, Aristo, like means uh, like upgrade, like whenever the user right now when the self cluster was in 5.1 when we release 5.1 g1 or 5.2 so i thought in the dashboard itself we should support like uh, all the entire self cluster can be upgraded using some buttons something in dashboard ah okay 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 yeah the update uh, feature I, yeah that's well good thing is that that's technically supported right from from self adm so it could be just exposing it yeah it, it makes sense it's yes of sense. there is a that. see in cli command we have self -arc start in from the safety so that we can make it in dashboard as well yeah 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 i remember we were talking about that um yeah yeah one more thing i restore like uh, right now we are supporting rpd mirroring from the dashboard like complete configuring everything with key mm -hmm. and everything. So like that way, can you start like RGW multi-set configuration? Yeah, that's a good one. It's been a pending, uh, uh, yeah, issue for, I mean, uh, we've been planning to do that for ages. Um, I think is that it's quite complex and the feedback that we got from users or the users that use the RGW multi-site is that the deployments are sometimes so specific and required. So I mean, um, be so watchful at that. That well, uh, the the only feedback, feedback that we got here was from from Red Hat uh, uh, support team, and they basically prefer to do that manually rather than. I think also the Fansible supported some uh, multi-site uh, deployment, but even though they prefer to do that uh, manually, because of I'm not sure exactly what kind of issues that may uh, face, but maybe due to load issues or other kind of issues, they prefer to do that step by step. But yeah, it might make sense. Probably we'll need to, um, after we deploy the, we complete the RBD um, and the CFS mirroring, yeah, we will have to go back to, to RGW multi-site just to see if we can improve that. Sure, yeah, thank you. At least like right now, RGW multi-site monitoring is there. So that at least we can make it much more like object wise, user wise, bucket wise, everything like much more monitoring. So that is also good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. And uh, thanks, Junior, for the links. I uh, just paste them there. No worries. Okay, so I think we are, yep. Sorry, I interrupted someone. Oh no, I just said no worries, sorry. Okay, yeah. So we are approaching the time and I think we are sharing these uh, logins with the orchestrator Fox, right? So thank you everyone for your time. Um, 
please uh, add anything that you any feedback any suggestions whatever to the uh, the other part and well, uh, you know where to find uh, Ceph dashboard developers at Ceph dashboard RC channel um, in Ceph uh, in the depth uh, mailing list so feel free to reach out to us in case that you have any suggestions or um, ideas or whatever so thank you very much everyone for your time have a nice day bye hey thank you Right, thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody.